Hello and welcome back. Today I am talking about sleep. We all need more of it. It's something which a lot of us let slip and many of us don't realise quite what an important thing sleep is in terms of underpinning our mental health and emotional resilience. So you might think this video is not for you, but it is. It's for everybody. So it's for you personally, whether you have or don't have any mental health issues at this time. It's also for you if you're a parent or someone who works with young people and you might be able to help them to develop more healthy sort of sleep habits. It's also for you directly if you are a young person and you want to do everything Thing you can to get yourself in the best most resilient place these kind of things become even more important at tricky times so in things like the lead up to exams for example um, or if we go through other periods of stress in our life then sleep can be one of the things that first slips so sleep is one of the three key underpinnings to our physical health and our physical health underpins our mental health so as well as sleep then we also need to eat healthily and we also need to make sure that we get active and get ourselves out and have fresh air and, and keep our bodies moving um, so sleep is one of those kind of three key pillars of good physical health um, which underpins our mental health and just gives us a better chance of staying well or getting well. So when it comes to sleep, uh, the number one most important thing that we can do is try and get a good routine. That means trying to go to bed at a similar time each night and trying to get up at a similar time each morning. Um, lots of us will take the opportunity to lie in and kind of binge sleep at the weekend. Actually, our bodies really, really like a good regular routine. And we find that if we go to bed and get up at the same time each day, that it's much easier to fall asleep at night and it's also much easier to get up in the morning. So if we're able to try and establish a good steady routine, even despite the weekend, even despite the holidays, um, then that's one of the basic the ways that we can get the best quality of sleep uh, when we're sleeping. Um, the next one is to have a think about the kind of routine that we have of an evening. So in that time kind of leading up to bedtime. So we want to be planning sort of relatively calm activities in the evening. So we shouldn't be doing any kind of really heavy exercise just before bed. We should be avoiding things like caffeinated drinks and sugar and other sort of junk foods uh, in the run up to bedtime as well. So we want to be thinking about what activities we can be doing that are essentially preparing us for sleep. And sometimes we can learn a lot about this when and we think how we would kind of work with a toddler. So if you're a parent or someone who has experience of spending time with young children, then you know that, you know, in that time leading up to bedtime, if you're gonna to manage to get them down to sleep on time, you do have to do things like do more gentle, calming activities, reading, coloring, um, and that sort of thing is in the lead into bed and you're not gonna be feeding them junk food or, you know, anything that's gonna send them high. Those exact same principles we should be applying to ourselves, whether we're four, 14, 44, 104 um, it continues to apply we just become worse at applying it later on so if necessary we need to treat ourselves like a toddler um, the next one is that where possible and I appreciate this isn't always possible but where possible we should keep our bedroom for sleeping so we want our bedroom to be somewhere that is associated with sleep for us and that means both that we don't carry out lots of other activities in the bedroom so if possible um, we might do homework or work in other places it might not be the place that we um, carry out other kind of hobbies and activities we might try to do those somewhere else in the house I do appreciate not everyone has the room to, to be able to do this um, if that's the case what you can think of doing again if you have a large enough room is to kind of zone the room so you might have your kind of sleeping zone where your bed is and it's very calm um, and then you might have another area is perhaps saved for doing homework or hanging out with friends or whatever you might want to do uh, in your room that that isn't kind of sleeping and again this is about giving our body kind of a good connection with this place of sleep as yes this is where I sleep um, this is somewhere that's nice and calm when I'm here I kind of feel ready to sleep um, and the other thing there is that if you struggle with sleeping you want to try and break the association of your bed as somewhere where you can't sleep and that actually means that if you are having a night where it's difficult to sleep giving yourself a break from trying and saying if you've tried for half an hour get up go to the different part in your room or a different part in the house and do some calming activities forgive yourself for the fact that you can't get to sleep do some calming activities and then try again now those activities will depend on you you might read um, you might color you might have a, a, a kind of calm quiet hobby that you like to participate in you might have a warm drink you might listen to some music it really depends on you but what you really don't want 
want is to get to the point where you've spent so long in bed trying to sleep and getting stressed about the fact that you can't sleep that your body then begins to associate your bed with not sleeping. So we're trying to make nice, warm, sleepy associations with bed um, and trying to keep those. Um, when it comes to not sleeping, a key thing to remember is that whilst it's very important that we do get enough sleep and we try and get into this regular routine and this will improve over time. If we really can't sleep, then the worst thing we can do is get stressed about the fact we're not sleeping. Lying there thinking, oh God, it's only three and a half hours now so I have to get up, how am I gonna manage? I'm gonna be really, really tired it's not going to help at all. You're actually much, much better off saying, okay, this isn't working right now. There's too much stuff going around in my head. Sometimes just take going and writing down whatever it is that's in your head and giving yourself permission not to think about it is helpful. But otherwise just going, doing something else, calm down and then come back and try again. It's fine. You're not going, you know, you might feel a bit tired the next day, but one night of broken sleep isn't going to cause you any great harm. Um, and the other thing is that you don't have to catch up as much sleep as you've missed out. So your body will catch up, but if you've missed five hours of sleep, so you don't have to catch up that five hours the next night, your body's very, very good at kind of resetting relatively quickly. And that's great news generally if you're looking to get a better sleep routine, um, because you might have months and months behind you, or years in some cases, of poor sleep. But actually, if you begin to put good habits in place, then your body will get used to that quite quickly. That routine will set in and actually you will find a change change to how you feel and your resilience and your well-being relatively swiftly. Um, and then the final thing, and this is one that's going to be one of my big pushes for the next year, um, is thinking about what devices you keep by your bed. Do you keep a phone or a tablet or any kind of online device next to you in bed? Do you check it last thing at night or first thing in the morning or sometimes even through the night? Have a think about that connectivity and whether that's a good thing. Think about maybe setting a limit at, at night at which point you're going to try not to go online anymore and try and actually kind of break yourself away from that so that you're ready for sleep um, and that you're not you know try not to be worrying about and kind of missing out on things that kind of FOMO fear of missing out can be a real issue uh, with our online devices so try and become a little bit less connected at night this is something that's particularly important when we're working with adolescents who um, studies show they will check their devices throughout the night for social media um, this is obviously going to mean that they're their sleep is going to get really disrupted and they're going to really miss out on that that good quality deep sleep that we get when we've been asleep for several hours okay i hope that gives you a few ideas these are things that i'm personally working on really hard myself as well and they're things that if you struggle with anxiety with depression with other mental health issues that can become harder but when we are looking at ways to help ourselves to improve our mental health no matter where it is on the spectrum at the moment one of the easiest wins that we can have is to work on our sleep so give it a go think about what small changes you might be able to make um, and see if it makes you feel better um, I hope it was helpful. Please leave a comment down below with any additional suggestions you have. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> As I was saying, any additional suggestions you might have, uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you'd like to hear more from me, please subscribe. Bye, until next time.